Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. So in the previous class we discussed about uh, predicates and uh, quantifiers. So what is predicate, what is predicates, and what is predicate logic, okay? So what is proportional logic, okay? And uh, uh, what is quantification, what are the different types of quantifiers we have, what are universal quantifiers, what are existential quantifiers, with an example. So now, and the most important topic which we're going to discuss today, theory of inference for the predicate calculus. So we already know what predicate is all about, right? So for example, if you say x less than nine, so that is called a predicate. So when it is converted to proposition, so when we substitute any value in the place of x, like four less than nine, then four less than nine becomes a proposition. So if that is fit into any function, for example, if we say uh, f of x, uh, or x uh, less than nine, so then that is called a proportional function. Okay, so predicate is, um, Till now, we have not substituted any value for that particular variable. So, uh, the predicate calculus will mainly deal with uh, how an implication of this uh, compound statements will come into picture. So, uh, here, if an implication P tends to Q is a tautology where P and Q may be compound statements involving any number of proportional variables, we say that. Q logically follows from P. Okay, so uh, Q logically follows from P. That means Q is getting from P. So if there is a tautology. So what is tautology? When all becomes true. Okay, suppose P of P1 comma P2 comma up to P and tends to Q, then this implication is true regardless of the truth values of any of its components. In this case, we can say that Q logically follows from P1, P2 up to Pn. So if you have uh, n number of uh, components, like uh, uh, here we say P tends to Q. Okay, so what does it mean? Q uh, logically follows from P. So if we say we have different types of uh, components, like P1, P2, P3 up to Pn. Now we can uh, straight away say that Q logically follows from P1, P2, P3, so on up to Pn. Okay. So proofs in mathematics are valid arguments that establish the truth of mathematical statements. To de deduce new statements from statements we already have, we use rules of inference, which are templates for constructing valid arguments. So here the main thing is not to make a perfect proof. Here we should have a valid argument. Okay, so here we should build valid arguments. So rules of inference are our basic tools for establishing the truth of statements. Okay. So first we'll see what is a valid argument. So for example, uh, uh, for example, if anyone uh, talks about uh, uh, anything, any, any rule, okay, so if we agree to that rule, uh, here we'll say that uh, uh, the person who discussed this point is valid. So he has given a valid argument. That means uh, we are recognizing that argument. So uh, um, we know what he's talking about and uh, Somehow we liked that argument, so then uh, we certified that that argument is valid argument. So here, an argument in propositional logic is a sequence of propositions. Now comes propositional logic. Now what is proposition? So as you know that x less than nine is a predicate. Now what is proposition? If we substitute any value in that particular variable x, then that is said to be proposition. So, and that deals with the function is called proportional logic. So, an argument in proportional logic is a sequence of propositions. All propositions in the arguments are called hypothesis or premises. So, for example, if we have an argument, in that argument, if there are many propositions, and all propositions present in that argument are called hypothesis or a premises. The final proposition is called the conclusion. Okay, so first we'll start with someone. Uh, something and finally we'll have a conclusion so that's what we do uh, uh, every time right so here we, uh, we'll start for example if we are uh, telling about any story so we'll start with uh, uh, the story and finally we'll end with a conclusion right like climax or something okay so here all propositions in the argument are called hypothesis or we can call it as a premises whereas the final proposition the final proposition is called the conclusion. So an argument formed in propositional logic is a sequence of compound propositions, okay, involving propositional variables. 
an argument form is valid if no matter which particular propositions are substituted for the propositional variables okay so we have propositional variables and which propositions are uh, substituted for example uh, previously we saw an example f of x where x of x belongs to uh, x is less than 8 so here uh, we said p of x okay so in the place of x we substitute value so p of 1 p of 2 that's what they here propositional variables in which propositions are substituted. The conclusion is true if the, all the premises are all true. So what are premises here? All the propositions which are fit in that particular argument. Okay. All the propositions which are fit in that particular argument, then when it will be true, when all the propositions are true, then the propositional logic will be true. So this is called as a valid argument. Okay. Thus, we say that conclusion C can be drawn. Thus, we can say that conclusion C can be drawn from a given set of premises or the argument is valid. The conjunction of all the premises implies the conclusion is a tautology. Okay. So, here everything should be true. Okay, so all the premises should be true and finally at the conclusion should be a tautology. Then that is called a valid argument. Now what are the rules of inference for proportional logic? So we can always use a truth table to show that argument form is valid. Okay, so here uh, we know uh, how to construct a truth table. We already discussed in our previous videos. Okay. So, what is tautology when all are uh, true, there is tautology. So, what is uh, exactly opposite to that contradiction? When everything is false, it is called contradiction. Like that. Okay. So, we can always use a truth table to show that an argument form is valid. Arguments based on tautologies represent universally correct method of reasoning. Their validity depends only on the form of statements involved and not the truth values of the variables. Okay, so what are the different statements which are involved in that? Not only entirely depends upon the truth values, but also it depends upon the, uh, the form of statements involved. Okay, so we'll see the rules of inference here. And remember, this is most, most important. Okay, rules of inference. So these rules of inference can be used as building blocks to construct more complicated valid argument forms. So what is an argument C? You have a current password. Okay. So I am saying to some person, we have a current password. You can log on to the network. So these are all some valid arguments. Okay. So all these, and remember, uh, every valid argument contains different types of propositions, which are called premises. Okay. And final conclusion should be true. And every value should, uh, should come as a true. Okay. So you have a current password, uh, let it be P, Q, yeah, you can log on to the network. Then the argument involving the propositions, okay? So how to convert that? If we, if you have a current password, then you can log on to the network, okay? So how to convert that statement here? If, uh, if you have a current password, then you can log on to the network. So if you don't have the current password, then you can't uh, log on to the network, right? Okay. So uh, the argument involving the proposition. So here uh, we combined, we clubbed the propositions and finally we got a valid argument. So that is what, right? So valid argument is a combination of propositions, which we call it as premises or hypothesis. And the final conclusion is, uh, final uh, proposition is called a conclusion. Okay. So if you have a current password, then you can log on to the network. You have a current password, therefore you can log on to the network as the form. Okay. So P tends to Q. P. Okay. We'll get Q. So P tends to Q. If you have a current password, then you can log on to the network. P. If you have a current password, therefore you can log on to the network. So you can log on to the network is nothing but Q. You can see here. P is you, ha you have a current password. Q is you can log on to the network. So as you said that P tends to Q is nothing but Q will get from P. So when we can log on to the network, until unless we can uh, have a current password, we can't log on to the network, so, right? So Q is getting from P. So P tends to Q and when it will be valid? Only if we have P with us. So what is P? See, if we have a network with you, that doesn't make any sense until unless you have a password with you. Okay. 
So the current one, if you have a current password, then you can log out of the network. So P tends to Q. So if then, so it is nothing but uh, implies. So P tends to Q. So when it will be valid argument? Only when you have a P with you. So P means if and when you have a current password. So P. So what if you have P? What if you have a current password? Then we can log on to the network. At the end of the day, we'll get Q. So our main agenda is to log on to the network. So when that uh, when that happens, so once we have P with us, then we'll obviously get a Q. Okay. So where this symbol, this symbol that denotes therefore, therefore, we know that P and Q are proportion variables. Remember, P is a proportion variable and Q is a proportion variable. P and Q are proportion variables, then the statement. P tends to Q and P. I should have both. Okay, so P tends to Q and P tends to Q is a tautology. It should result in true. That's what we are saying. All the proportion should finally conclude it to truth value. That is tautology. So what is our statement here? P tends to Q and P and whole tends to Q is a tautology. So you can uh, check that with the truth table. So this, this is the valid argument, hence is a rule of inference called modus ponens or the law of detachment. So this rule should be, uh, are very, very important, you should remember. So modus ponens, so they will give some problem and they will ask you to solve using modus ponens. Okay, so what is modus ponens? P tends to Q and P and finally you will get therefore Q. Okay, so now we'll see uh, rules. Okay, so uh, just now we discussed the first one, right? Uh, modus ponens. So P, P tends to Q, we get Q. So either way you can write. So you can write first P tends to Q, later on you can write P, and finally we'll get Q. Either way you can write. So here, uh, what is our tautology here? P tends to, P tends to, sorry, P and P tends to Q, we'll achieve Q, which is called as modus ponens. Second one. Modus tollens. Okay, so don't get confused. Modus ponens is different. Modus tollens is different. So what is modus tollens here? If we have a negation Q, okay, and if we have a P tends to Q, so for example, we give any statement like uh, uh, if you if you if we have this, then you can do this. And if we apply negation of that uh, particular result which we are uh, getting, then uh, for example, if you see an example, uh, uh, if we have a current password, then you can log on to the network. You can't log on to the network. Here I'm giving a negation Q. Negation Q is you can't log on to the network. What does it mean? Negation P. Negation P. Negation Q is you can't log on to the network. If we can't log on to the network, it means that we don't have a current password with us. Okay. If we have a current password, obviously we would have logged into log on to the network. But here we are saying that we can't able to log on to the network, which means that we don't have a current password with us. So negation Q, P tends to Q, we get negation P, which is called as modus tollens. Okay. So next important one is hypothetical syllogism. Okay. So P tends to Q, Q tends to R, we we'll get P tends to R. Okay, so P tends to Q and Q tends to R. Finally, we'll get P tends to R. For example, uh, if you have a uh, current password, then you can log on to the network. You can, if you log on to the network, then you can use the services. See, uh, uh, let us put this in words. If you have a current password, then you can log on to the network. If you have a current password is P, you can log on to the network is Q. And if you can log on to the network, you can use, use the services is R. Okay, so P tends to Q, Q tends to R, we'll get P tends to R. Okay, so that's why the, uh, that is called hypothetical syllogism. That means if you have a current password, then you can use the services. Okay, so P tends to Q and Q tends to R, we'll get P tends to R. Next, uh, the uh, third one is hypothetical syllogism, and fourth one is disjunctive syllogism. Okay, so disjunction means R. Conjunction means under. So remember, if we say conjunction, we should use under symbol that is cap. If we use disjunction, that is or. 
Okay. So here, Dijing syllogism is P or Q. So either P or Q and negation P, then we'll get Q. Okay. So uh, do this or do this. Okay. And negation P is don't do this. Then you'll get Q. Okay. So I'm saying that uh, uh, go to market or go to movie. Okay, so go to market is P, go to movie is Q. Okay, then straight away next I am saying that don't go to market. So what is left with me? So first initially I said go to market, either go to market or go to movie. So uh, I can do either way. I can go to market or I can go to movie. Now I am saying that don't go to market. Now what is the option left with me? I should obviously go to movie. So that is nothing but Q. So P or Q negation B will get Q, which is called as disjunctive syllogism. Okay. So next is addition. So addition, simplification, transaction, resolution. So addition. P, we can drag from P or Q. Okay. So that is called addition. So P, therefore, we'll get P or Q. P, P and Q will get P. That is simplification. Okay. From P and Q, we are simplifying it to P. Okay, so please remember these formulas. Okay, these rules are most most important. So based on this, we will solve problems in our next video. Okay, so just pause the video and you can please note it down. So P, P or Q is called addition. P and Q, uh, therefore we get P, which is called simplification. P, Q, P and Q. So P is uh, uh, one proportional variable. Q is one proportional variable. We are... Uh, Conjuncting, uh, we are combining that. So P and Q. So P and Q, we get P and Q. Next is resolution. So P or Q. And next is negation P or R. So we will get Q or R. So P and negation P will get cancelled. We will get Q or R. This is called resolution. Okay. So these are all called rules of inference. So based on this, we will uh, solve examples in our next video. Okay. So I hope you understood about uh, uh, rules of inference. So this is most, most important topic. So uh, please uh, give your valuable feedback in comments so that I can understand uh, uh, if I am uh, able to provide more examples or something like that. Okay. So uh, the students who are watching my channel for the first time, I request you to please subscribe my channel. Please share me with your friends and well-wishers and please support my channel in all possible ways. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.